welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I use Flash to get great results on a wedding dance floor. Just wanted to give you a simple explanation of the settings I use and why I use it the way I use it so that maybe it can help you out. I found it very hard to wrap my head around Flash and it's actually really simple, at least the way that I've learned how to do it. And I want to give a massive shout out to my friend James Pierce. He's got his own YouTube channel here, Pierce Wedding Photography. I'm going to link his channel in the description. The only reason I'm saying that is because he actually made a video that actually helped me grasp and understand Flash and I'm trying to pass that knowledge on to you as well. Um, during the wedding day, if you've ever shot a wedding before, you will understand and, and know there are a lot of pitfalls when it comes to lighting. When you're in a, say in a hotel room, there's lots of weird lights that can ultimately be quite a few different sources of light. And I tend to just find it easier to just turn the, the lights off and use any available window light. I'm using window light here to film the video. I don't like using off camera lighting or anything like that if I can avoid it. Especially with mirrorless cameras, this is my Z5. Uh, I've got two Z5s. I shoot with an 85 and a 28. Mirrorless cameras, as you know, the high ISO performance tends to be quite good. So you can get away with pumping that ISO up. A little bit higher and I use obviously prime lenses. This is a 1.8, my 28 is a 2.8. So it does allow you to shoot wide open and let a lot of light in. But there are certain situations, mainly dance floors, where I feel that the lighting situation is absolutely terrible. Be it that it's too dark with no available natural light coming in. Obviously these parties happen in the evening time or just such a variety of different lights that you can't really be in control of stuff like the white balance. You'll take one photo where someone's face is purple, another photo where their face is green or blue, and it's just like, it's so hard. So what I find the easiest to do is to use flash. Now, there's no right or wrong when it comes to using flash. There's only what works for you. So I'm gonna show you what works for me. So. I've got the Godox V862 and what I do is I don't set it up off camera. I quite literally screw it on like that, tying it up. And when I'm on the dance floor, I want to set up my exposure. This is this was the stuff I used to get confused about. I used to just turn my flash on and start trying all sorts of different settings and I'd, I'd get really annoyed because I couldn't quite grasp what settings I needed. So what my mate James explained to me and, and, and in the video that he made, which kind of made me understand it and put it into practice was set your exposure first. So I set my shutter speed to one two hundredth of a second. You might not see this, but my shutter speed's at one two hundredth of a second. F1.8, always shoot wide open on dance floors. And then what I do is I set my exposure with the ISO. Keep the flash off because mirrorless cameras will show you the exposure with the flash, what it thinks it will look like. So keep it off. And on the back of the screen, you'll see your exposure. Um, behind me is very underexposed, but for the purposes of showing you you want to try and get the back of the screen or your EVF looking about a stop to a stop and a half underexposed. So set your shutter speed to one two hundredth. You have got flash um, high speed sync where you can have higher shutter speeds. I don't find it necessary and I think it overcomplicates things a little bit. So one two hundredth of a second always wide open always so if your lens goes to 1.8 or 1.4 or even 2.8 whatever it goes to shoot wide open set your exposures using the iso say look for about a stop to a stop and a half under once you've got that you literally switch your flash on now again you can do whatever you want i tend to leave it on manual so that i can sort of this little wheel here gives me the controls to change the power. So I've left it switched off at one over 32. So what I do once I've got the exposure I want on the back of the camera, switch the flash on, take a test shot, pointing up at the ceiling. Now, most places they will have some sort of decoration style thing hanging down or just a normal white ceiling. Um, I find some people like bouncing off to the side or behind them. I don't trust the walls because sometimes you're bouncing off a wooden beam. 
or whatever and personally I prefer to just bounce off the ceiling that's how I get my best results you can sort of go like that if you wanted to shoot behind you um, or off to the side but the, the 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 one place that stays in the same place no matter how you move across the room for me is the ceiling so i'll take a test shot 130 over 32 i'll look at it quickly chimp and think right it's too dark still so i'll go down to 1 16th take another test shot chimp again that's literally it it's as simple as that um i'll show you the results um you've seen some of the photos I, i've taken but that's literally it there are different ways of using flashes i say there's no right or wrong some people will do it differently some people will set up a stand in the corner of the room with off camera flash one in that corner one in that corner aim it to the ceiling have a trigger on top of their camera i just find it easy to have this and what I do normally is if I'm switching between cameras, because I like shooting wide on the dance floor. So if I'm going over to my 28mm, I'll just quickly remove this, whack it on the hot shoe of my other camera, and do exactly the same thing. Creatively, what you see is how I like my pictures to look. I like isolating the subject. I don't like showing too much of the environment unless it's worth showing. And then I just adjust it in, in Lightroom and, and increase the exposure. But for the most part, um, I guess you pigeonhole me as the dark and moody style. And, and that's how I shoot. I hope this is helpful. I'm going to link a couple of videos here that will hopefully be of use to you. So give, go give them a watch. And don't forget, obviously, to go down in the description below and check out my mate James's YouTube channel. He is fantastic. Most of what I know, I've learned from him. So nice to see you, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.